everyone, it's Moose, and thank you so much for joining me back here. Listen, the red sweater coming up, a bunch of tag videos that I've either been tagged in and I'm just trying to catch up, or I've seen and I'm like, I would like to do that. So, just preface, if you see the red sweater, I'm pre-recording a lot of videos, it's time for tags. Today we are doing the this or that tag. I was tagged by the Minimal Bibliophile, so thank you so much for tagging me. I will link her channel down below. This is another tag I don't anticipate to take very long, so let's just get into it. Question number one, what is your oldest book and your newest book? I'm trying to find out. I don't know if this means like the one you've had the oldest, the one that was published first, I'm not sure. I'm going to go by publication. I have The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. This was 1944. Let me check one more. Hold on. Okay, so yes, The Pickwick Papers is my oldest book on my shelf. And then Midnight Sun is the newest book on my shelf. It's the only book I bought last year that was released last year. So this is the newest. Okay, question number two. What is your biggest book and your smallest book in terms of book size, not page length? Okay, I'm gonna say The Chronicles of Narnia is the biggest book on my shelf. I have a lot of hefty books on my shelf, actually. Now that I look at it, I have Lord of the Rings, um, A Court of Mist and Fury, Kingdom of Ash, which are all pretty dense, big books, but I think this is the biggest. And then I have The Scarlet, and then I have, mm, and then I have The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne for my smallest book. It's a mass mass market so it's already tiny and then it's also page length tiny too so okay these are actually harder than I anticipated it's been a while since I watched her video so I don't really remember the questions that well question number four what is your most expensive book and which was the best bargain um this one's tough because I hardly ever pay full price for anything okay I think my edition of Lord of the Rings would be my most expensive book it was 30 bucks but it's all three books um, it's the whole trilogy, so it's really like 10, book, 10 bucks a piece for the books, which is not bad for adult fiction. But overall, this would be my most expensive book. And then my best bargain, I think, would be Trickster's Choice by Tamora Pierce. This one I got at Ollie's for $1.99. You can't beat that. I might have another one that's like cheaper than that. I'm not counting books that were given to me. I have quite a few that have been given to me, so I'm not counting those. So yeah, this one would probably be my best bargain. Oh, I skipped question number three. Ah! Show the longest book you own and the shortest in page length. Hmm. All right. I'm going to check Narnia first just because it's hefty. I kind of think Kingdom of Ash might be longer, though, if I'm being honest. Ah! Oh, no. No. Ah! Well, you know what? No, I think it's going to be the Canterbury Tales. Hold on. This thing is thick thicker than a snicker. If you count the like glossary and stuff in the back, it's over 1200 pages, 1250-ish. So yeah, this is the biggest one in terms of page length. That one's also in Old English, so I think that contributes to the, the length of it. Shortest book. Okay, I have a lot within like the 230-ish range, but I think my shortest is The Giver by Lois Lowry. That is two, if you don't count the afterwards and stuff, two, okay, 225, okay. Okay, question number five, show the most beautiful cover on your shelves and which has the ugliest. I've said this one before, I think Queen of, Queen of the Tearling has just such a beautiful cover. I really like the gold accents and stuff like that. And then ugliest I think would be Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Stowe. Um, I don't know, it's just kind of plain to me. Either that one or The Scarlet Letter because I'm not a fan of people on the covers of books. Okay, question number six. What is your favorite book and what's one you hated? See, this one's tough because I just did an unhaul. Um, I've decided to not keep books that I don't like, so I'm going to give you a couple of my favorites because I can't pick just one, and then I don't have one that I hated on my shelf again. Apart from the usual ones you've heard me talk about before, like Twilight and The Hunger Games and Harry Potter, I really like The Help. I really like uh, The Thanks They Carried by Tim O'Brien, and last year I read the Becca Cooper trilogy by Tamora Pierce, and I think it's one of my new favorite trilogies. The last, something happens in the last one that kind of keeps me from like def definitely saying that, but it it's good. 
Question number seven, name a book that made you cry and one that made you laugh. Uh, I don't really cry over books that much, but most recently, and when I say most recently, this was like 2020, uh, like a year ago, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I reread this one for a class. I was pregnant. People cry over this even when they're not pregnant, but like I say, I'm not really a crier. Anyways, this one made me cry. And then I have already packed up my copy of this book uh, because it was on my bottom shelf, but a book that made me laugh was Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. It's an adult fantasy book, kind of a D&D &D campaign, lighthearted fantasy, funny moments. Question number eight, name a book that warmed your heart and one that made you shiver. For one that warmed my heart, I'm going to pick The Chronicles of Narnia. I don't really have a specific one, um, but they are just lighthearted reads that I enjoyed for the most part. There are a few I didn't care much for, but for the most part, they warm my heart. For one that made me shiver, I'm going to pick Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Yes, this is a popular YA science fiction about an AI that kind of takes over, and the thought of it just kind of made me like, like so anxious for the entire read, but I fl flew through it. I can't talk today. This one made me shiver, and one more. My most recent read, Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, physical read that is, made me shiver for different reasons. There are some things that happened in this book that just made my skin like crawl almost, made my heart ache, not in a good way. I did not enjoy some of those scenes, made me uncomfortable sometimes. Um, I still have mixed feelings about this. Regardless, I'm shivering just, just talking about it. Like I have a cold chill going down my spine. So this one as well. Okay, question number nine. What's one book you can't wait to read and one you've been putting off? The one I can't wait to read is The Rage of Dragons. I have this on hold on Libby. It's actually available for me last night as of, so I plan on reading this next for my ebook read. I'm excited to get to it. In terms of one I've been putting off, Chronicles of the Black Company by Glenn Cook. I bought this in high school, maybe college, um, on the recommendation of someone that I trusted, you know. Um, it's an adult fantasy, don't really know much about it. I think that's kind of why I've been putting it off. I don't know, I need to get to it. 10, recommend a book you want people to read and one that wasn't as good as expected. The one I want people to read is the Becca Cooper Trilogy by Tamora Pierce. As I said previously, this was one of my favorites of last year. I never hear anybody talk about it. I feel like Tamora Pierce is one of those writers that everyone knows her name, but you never see anyone talk about. Uh, so yeah, I want everyone to read this. And then yeah, the fifth season is the one that wasn't as good as expected. Everyone I ever see talk about this raves about it. They love it. They say, oh, it's so good, blah, 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 blah. Since it was so hyped, I was excited to get to it. I thought it would blow me away. Not at all. <laughs> um, it wasn't bad. And I wouldn't necessarily not recommend it, um, but it definitely was not as good as expected. I think it's a little overhyped if you ask me. All right, last question. The next book you want to buy and the next one you'll be getting rid of from your shelves. This is interesting. Um, Hmm. I don't have like a strong, strong desire to buy anything. Uh, I've been doing a lot of digital reading, whether it be audiobooks or ebooks. I also want to read Crescent City, maybe that one. The book I want to get rid of, I've already packed up. Um, I'll probably get the first one that came to my mind was Red Queen. I am currently listening to the last book. And I don't plan on buying the rest of the series, so I don't really see the point in keeping the first one if I don't have the whole series. You know what I'm saying? So I'll probably get rid of that one. Or the selection. I recently listened to those at the beginning of the year. I only have the first one. I enjoyed them. Maybe not enough to keep them. So maybe one of those two. So yeah, that took a lot longer than I anticipated just because I had to think through my answers. But that was the this or that tag. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe down below and leave a comment. Thank you so much to The Minimal Bibliophile for tagging me. Again, go check out her channel. You guys are awesome. I am so, so thankful for you. And we'll be back here next time, guys. See ya!